An officer disciplined after handcuffing four girls, forcing them face down onto the hot asphalt. These are people's lives. Tonight, new controversy as he puts his name forward for the top law enforcement job in a southern Colorado county. It angers me that you would have someone in policing law enforcement that has poor judgment. A sobering milestone in the fight to contain the coronavirus, putting the drive to vaccinate into sharp focus tonight. This virus will continue to improve upon itself as long as we have unvaccinated populations. As the state vaccine lottery wraps up, can a charm offensive win over the hesitant? I do think there are still populations that are uh, large populations of Colorado that are persuadable potentially for the vaccine. One of the officers criticized for forcing these girls to lie face down, handcuffed in an Aurora parking lot, now wants to be sheriff of a southern Colorado county. Darian Dasco was suspended after forcing this family out of their car, mistakenly believing it was stolen. And at one point, an officer pointed a gun at them. Good evening and welcome to Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Shannon Ogden. I'm Ann Trujillo. Thank you for joining us. The Aurora mayor called the incident improper, traumatizing. And now, as Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo reports, Dasco is throwing his hat in the ring in the race to be the sheriff of Las Animas County. The cries of black children put face down on hot pavement in a parking lot in Aurora after being ordered out of this SUV at gunpoint last summer drew condemnation of the tactics of the responding Aurora police officer led by officer Darian Dosco. I felt like these are innocent black people, children, six years old to 17 years old. Officers mistakenly thought the SUV was stolen. I had to fight back the tears when I heard them crying for their mother. Even the Aurora police chief denounced the wrongful detainment. It's uncalled for and it's, it shouldn't have happened, and I, I wish we could take it back. Dr. Thomas Mays, the vice president of the Greater Metro Denver Ministerial Alliance, accused the officers involved of racial profiling and wanted Dosco fired. Dosco was suspended as a result. It angers me that you would have someone in policing law enforcement that has poor judgment. And now that same officer is running for sheriff 200 miles south of Aurora in Las Animas County. One fear. It's they will have a person in charge that has poor judgment when it comes to people. My second fear is that the people may elect him, knowing that. If that reflects their, uh, the personality of Los Animas, then it's another place that we don't want to go. Dosco did not face charges for the traffic stop. The 18th Judicial District Attorney's Office found the incident concerning, but added that there wasn't enough evidence to conclude Dosco and the other officer unlawfully or recklessly used excessive force in the detainment. Dosco did receive a 160 hour suspension and lost his title as field training officer. You put a gun on four kids. Brittany Gilliam, the driver of the SUV, filed a civil lawsuit for emotional trauma against Dosco. Dosco is running as a Republican and is the first candidate to announce for the 2022 campaign. Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. And Denver 7 made several attempts to track down Dosco for comment, and we have not yet heard back. And leadership of another Colorado Police Department is coming under scrutiny. The Colorado Sun tonight reports an outside consulting company was hired by the city to investigate a complaint. The company's report called the situation inside the Woodland Park Police Department, quote, dire and said to fix it, the department needed to get rid of Chief Miles DeYoung. He resigned last week. Some of the major complaints against him, first, sexism. The report states, quote, there is a clear pattern of female officers in the department being treated differently than their male counterparts. Second, employee intimidation. The report says DeYoung intentionally intimidated employees, retaliated against them, and held grudges. Quote, the chief bragged about his time in the military and how the chief trained in psychological warfare. And it states he would sit down with employees and then, quote, stare at them, give them the silent treatment, and make it super uncomfortable, end of quote. In the letter to the city manager, DeYoung called the report incomplete, biased, and unfair. And today, the city of Woodland Park announced two commanders in the department have been placed on paid leave. And this comes as part of a probe by the Colorado Bureau of Investigation and the Teller County Sheriff's Office. 
An Aurora officer is facing DUI charges after being pulled over by Denver police on Monday. Officers say they stopped John Moreland on Tower Road near East 47th Avenue, and he is charged with obstructing a peace officer as well as driving under the influence. Aurora police confirm Sergeant Moreland has worked for them since 2007. The department says it will not comment until this case moves through the courts and an internal investigation is complete. And in the wake of a new law governing the use of ketamine by paramedics, the state health department is now making changes. EMTs injected Elijah McLean with a powerful sedative after he was detained by Aurora police in 2019. And as you know, he later died. Well, this new bill prevents EMTs from giving ketamine outside a hospital setting to sedate or subdue someone. And now the state health department says it is suspending all waivers for the use of ketamine for excited delirium or extreme agitation. The state health department says it is awaiting the results of an investigation into the sedative before taking any further action on waivers. A devastating milestone tonight. The global death toll from COVID-19 has topped 4 million. That's equal to 70% of the entire population of Colorado. And the U.S. has the world's highest reported death toll, more than 600,000, followed by Brazil with 520,000. And it is a stark reminder that this pandemic is far from over. And doctors say getting vaccinated could save your life. As Denver 7 Sloan Dickey reports, vaccination rates are dropping, and leaders now are looking for new ways to win over the hesitant. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, we are going to introduce our million dollar winner. Sorry, Colorado, if you're watching this and didn't get the call, you didn't win the vaccine lottery. The last million dollars went to Colorado mom, Heidi Russell. Uh, four kids are expensive, so uh, that's a good head start for them. Uh, I will now. But did the lottery have an impact on vaccines in Colorado? So far, at least 70% of eligible Coloradans received at least one dose. But overall, just over 52% of the entire state's population is vaccinated. Enthusiasm started to flatten out in April, well before the first vaccine lottery winner was announced in early June. Ohio was also a state that tried out the lottery system. A study by the Journal of American Medical Associates concluded there was no evidence that a lottery-based incentive in Ohio was associated with increased rates of adult COVID-19 vaccinations. Unfortunately, it's really difficult to gauge the success of the lottery just by looking at the numbers. But some experts say the numbers don't tell the whole story. The key question is what would have happened in the absence of introducing this vaccine lottery. As Colorado increases vaccinations, the smaller and smaller pool of unvaccinated residents are increasingly hostile to getting a shot. Glenn Mays at the University of Colorado School of Public Health says a lottery is one of many options to incentivize vaccines, but Colorado still has a long ways to go. I don't, I don't think we're yet at a vaccination coverage level that gives us the kind of protection we need. Now, as the vaccine lottery ends, he says Colorado still is well below the threshold needed to reach herd immunity. Likely we're not going to be up in the 80 percent or higher level, given, especially given the new variants that are out there. New techniques across the state and country are being deployed, including door-to-door -door outreach discussed on Tuesday by President Biden. Now we need to go to community by community, neighborhood by neighborhood, and oft times door-to-door, -door, literally knocking on doors to get help to the remaining people protected from the virus. Now that the state has concluded its multi-million dollar push to get Coloradans vaccinated, organizations are taking it upon themselves. UC Health announced last week that it will offer a $500 incentive for every employee who is vaccinated by the middle of August. It also said that it may be requiring vaccinations for COVID-19 come later this year. Reporting in Denver, Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. And when you dig a little deeper, there are clear differences of opinion on the vaccine between rural and urban areas. Bloomberg reports counties that supported Biden in 2020 had the highest percentage of people with at least one vaccine dose. Pro-Trump counties had the lowest. It adds up to much lower vaccination rates in rural counties overall. Now in Colorado, we see that trend playing out as well. The counties with the lowest vaccination rates are clustered on the Eastern Plains. Under 20% of people in Crowley County received at least one dose of the vaccine. Urban and mountain counties reported much higher vaccination rates. 
San Juan County in southwestern Colorado has the highest rate at just under 94 percent. And low vaccin vaccination rates are of concern because of the new variants of the virus on the rise. For perspective, Colorado ranks third in the nation by percentage of COVID cases attributed to the more infectious Delta variant. It accounts for more than a third of COVID cases now in our state. And doctors say the best protection against the variant as well. Get vaccinated as soon as possible. If you look right now at who's being hospitalized, 90% of these people have not been vaccinated and are still getting pretty sick from it. So being vaccinated, even if you're young and healthy, keeps you from ending up in the hospital with these variants, which are not to be messed with. And there are reports of breakthrough cases where vaccinated people become infected with the virus. And doctors say being vaccinated, though, means you are much less likely to need hospital treatment. And one group which cannot receive the vaccine yet, kids age 12 and under, and that's a big concern for schools eager to get back to in-person learning in the fall. The state health department says it plans to roll out a $170 million school testing program. The money comes from the federal government, and the plan is to make testing easily available to all students and teachers. It would build a testing team which can both administer the tests and report results, as well as work with established testing labs in Colorado. The state says it hopes to give a range of options and work with schools to best fit their needs so in-person learning can happen with minimal disruption. It happened really quick. A high stress moment at high altitude. I leaned back um, on the rock and my knee immediately got shocked. Experienced hikers caught off guard facing real danger atop a 14er. Storms don't, don't wear watches. They don't keep track of time. What you should know before you head to the high country. Triple digits off to the west of us will be close to 100 for the next couple of days.